I tend to think of my class more as blended rather than flipped, but I think when I think about it, it, it does have some aspects of flipping. So I think I'm going to be probably kind of meshing those two things together when talking about uh, the flipped classroom, also the blended classroom. So can you tell me what does flipped mean? What does hybrid or blended mean? What's the difference? How are they related? How are they related to technology, online learning? Maybe talk about that with a couple people near you for just a couple minutes and then we'll come together and see what we came up with. They would do lecture in class and then homework at home. And then the idea was that they would flip that, that they would do lecture at home beforehand and then do some kind of practice or group work in class. And I feel like we have never been really lecturing as language teachers. And so it's not quite the same concept as it maybe was for that those original teachers who I think were science teachers, anybody remember? Anyway, um, whoever they were, um, they were more kind of lecture-based. But it's the idea of kind of intentionally choosing what do you have students do in class and what do you have students do outside of class. And what about blended learning? Like I said, I kind of think of my class mostly as blended, but when I really think about it, it's also flipped. But it's blended. It's sort of the same idea, but the idea being part of the work is done in class and part of the work is done outside of the class. What are the reasons to do blended learning? But why, why is it kind of a popular thing to do now? Yeah. Because you have more time in the classroom to apply things instead of just teaching them. Right. You can choose what you want to do in the classroom. And this is, uh, at, at many places, including here, what we're doing with it is we're cutting down the number of in-class class hours. So, and that's kind of, I don't know, there are pros and cons to that, right? But part of it is kind of, strategic in that um, if we can have more flexibility for our students, then maybe they will be more willing to take a language class or maybe they'll be able to fit it in their schedule better than they would if they had. So as an example for my class, my Russian class used to be four hours a week in class. And what we did was we cut it down to three hours a week in class and then an hour I don't know if it exactly works out to that, but that hour was replaced by online work. And so, you know, the, the research seems to show hybrid or blended courses being no significant difference from the traditional face-to-face -face classes. There are pros and cons, obviously, but it's something that you can think about as you uh, as you plan your courses, and it's a way, perhaps, to kind of save on things like classroom space and time. Um, so I've come up with a list of what you might include in your language class. I'm not saying this is the only stuff. You could have other things that you would add to your list. You might not use everything in your class. But what I would like you to do with some people in the 
what you were talking about with course share, that it's yeah. a lot of logistics to get people to to be able to talk, although you could do it. What else? Uh huh. So presentations, there are some pros and cons for doing it probably online versus in class. But yeah. having them in class would be in class. has has some kind of plus to it. Yeah. What else? In class written tests. Yeah. In class written tests. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, you can do it in the online, but it's, it's in class. You are expecting them to. And I think that nowadays it's also important to make them write in class. To, to make them write in class. Because otherwise you never know uh, if they are writing this themselves mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. There are some issues or concerns about things like cheating that, um, that we can talk about. Yeah. yeah whether they're doing it themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's not that, if in real context, they can get help anywhere, and it's it's okay if they get help, but sometimes you need to know what they are capable of. Yeah. Any other things that people wanted to say about one of these or more of these things in class? So then the next thing I wanted you to do is think about your own class. I don't assume that you use all of these elements in your class. You might or you might not, or you might have some others. And so if you were going to flip or blend your class and you were going to make choices about what you were going to do online and what you were going to do in person, what would you decide? And it's interesting to hear what different people are saying because, and I will tell you, after we have this discussion, I'll tell you what I have done. And it's interesting because it's sort of different from what some of you have said, and I think that's natural that for different teachers or different programs, they might have different priorities or different um, styles. And so it might be different for you than it was for me, but I just want to, after this, I will share with you what my experience is. But what I want you to think about is, what parts of your class do you have? What parts do you think you would want to keep in person if you were going to? flip or blend your class, and which parts would you want to maybe move online or move to the time in class, uh, sort of outside the classroom. So go ahead and take a few minutes, talk to somebody near you about what you would do in your own class if you were doing this, mm -hmm. or what you have done, maybe. We just did this <laughs> Chicago, um, they work with um, in a flipped classroom and found out that almost everything can be flipped except for interaction. Mm -hmm. But actually
actually in the Spanish program we use talk abroad, but it, it's some some sort. I mean, it has to be well contextualized, and still, they some sometimes students need this interaction, and also for me they need to verify that what they've been learning home at home, maybe the, the videos that they watch or the grammar rules that they read and everything, they need to verify that um, this is a, they acquired it correctly or at least from a conceptual point of view, mm -hmm. um, they are right. They need some feedback, right? Yeah. That's the challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say it used to be maybe that we thought only reading could be done online, but now listening can too. And maybe we didn't. We used to think that interaction couldn't be done online, and now we're starting to see that maybe it is easier to do than it used to be. So it seems like the number of things that you can do online are kind of growing, and that's nice in the sense that it gives us more choices. Yeah. So we used to do oral performances at the end of each chapter. You have a day where they just go in and perform what they've learned from the chapter and give, give them a prompt and they do that. But I realized that took almost the whole class, 15 minute session, and we didn't have that class time. So I flipped that into Flipgrid videos. Mm -hmm. And so they just, you know, record their video. And mm -hmm. to make sure that in the classroom setting, they're able, I'm making sure that they're not reading off of a script. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I used Flipgrid because I told them you're using your camera. Mm -hmm. So you're like technically you're doing this, and I can see where your eyes are at. So if you're reading something, I will dock points. So I want this to be spontaneous, like you would in a classroom. So I mean, it's worked pretty well. I, we still have to tweak it because the prompts were not interesting enough. Mm -hmm. But Flipgrid's worked great to flip the oral. Yeah, exams. oral like oral exams or whatever you whatever you call them. That's what we used to call them, right? Um, mm -hmm. They're really hard to schedule, and so. Being able to do at least part of them online makes it a lot easier to, to and give more opportunities for students to speak. Yeah. And just to say, Canvas allows them. Canvas, um, they can do videos and record themselves. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. If they do not want to open accounts, uh, Oh, the reason we may I made them do Flipgrid is because normally um, the oral performances we have them do it in pairs, <coughs> and so you're talking to someone and then replying. And so when they do the Flipgrid, you post a video, and I give them partners, and you have to go in and reply to that person through a video. Okay. And so I don't know if we're I don't think we're able to do that on Canvas. I know you can yeah, upload you can videos yeah, on yeah. Canvas. We can yeah, do that on Canvas. Really? Yeah. yeah. File yeah. upload is an option. It has there. to be yeah. embedded. Yeah. Yeah. University. Yeah. Even, even you can. Correct. Uh, I mean, the corrections that you make can be also video recorded. And if you yeah. show yeah. us yeah. cameras, they can do it with something else. Yeah. But the flipgrid, yeah. can they record it and then delete yeah. the recording and then re record it? Yes, and then they delete can it? do it multiple times. And the reason I like flipgrid, I haven't explored the canvas option, is because students came up to me and they told me something mean. We really hated this assignment, but um, every time I had to record this, I was not happy with it that I did it almost each assignment about 15 times. Wow. <laughs> and so now I'm able to say these things because I've had to do it you like so many times. You tricked them into practicing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was not intentional, but that happened, so. Yeah, and we're mentioning some different tools. I'm gonna mention some tools that I use and probably you will mention some tools that you use. They're all kind of slightly different and to a certain extent, you might have to decide for yourself which one works for your context. Nothing's going to be perfect. Um, but one thing that I would recommend is um, if you're going to use, for example, if you're going to use a tool for them to do speaking, choose one that you're going to be consistent with for the whole semester or year um, so that they don't
but I explained to them, this is the strategy that I'm using. Because there's some research to show that if you figure out the rule yourself, you're going to remember it better than if I tell you. But there, I will tell you what the rule is, so you don't have to, I think it does make some anxiety for some students like me who, who do want to know the rule. So I tell them, it will be there, but you should spend some brain power in trying to figure it out. Um, so the grammar and vocabulary we put online, speaking and practice, we were trying to
here. I, 